Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at the Algebra 1 EOC 2019 version. All questions from reporting category number one. Number four, which function is equivalent to? So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because I've already got a video out on the 2017 version and the 2018 version where I discuss some calculator tips and strategies. So if you haven't watched those videos, I'll put a little link in the upper right corner of this video. You might want to watch the first five minutes or so of the 2017 video where I talk about some calculator tips that I'm going to refer to. So which function is equivalent to? So in this case, if you see the word equivalent, what can we do? We can store in two for the value of x. When you plug in two for the value of x, and then you plug in this on your calculator, you will get a number. When you go through your answer choices and you come to answer choice G and you plug this into your calculator, you will get that same number. All other answer choices, you will not get that same number. So G is your answer. You can obviously always factor two numbers that multiply to negative 54 and add to 15 or 18 and negative three. However, I'm going through some tips and strategies, maybe if you've struggled with algebra this year. So number eight, a baker determined the annual profit in dollars from selling pies using P of N equals 52 times N minus 0 0.05 times N squared, where N is the number of pies sold. What is the annual profit if the baker sells 400 pies? It's a word problem, mark it up. Okay. Anytime you see P of N, that's fancy schmancy for Y, F of X, P of N, G of X, that's fancy schmancy for Y. If you see that, you can replace it with Y. If you see Y equals in your word problem, you can plug it into Y equals. So Y equals 52X minus 0.05X squared. What is the annual profit? Okay, a baker determined the annual profit. Well, that means Y is annual profit. What is Y if the baker sells 400 pies? What is Y when N is 400? So if N equals the number of pies, which it tells us right here, plug in 400 for N. 52 times 400 minus 0 0.05 times 400 squared. You can always store in 400 for N, or you could store it in for X and just plug it in that way. But if you don't want to store in values for the variable, make sure that it looks like this, times 400 squared. And what do you get? You get G. So let's move on to number 13. Which expression is equivalent to? Okay, so instead of going over the exponent rules, I'm going to go over how you can do this if you've struggled with your exponent rules. So equivalent to, we can store in some values. We've got a variable m, a variable p, and a variable v. I could store in 2 for m. I could store in 3 for p. I could store in 4 for v. Um, I could actually, once I get those entered, I can make this look ex like this expression look exactly like this by going to alpha, then y equals for a fraction. Alpha y equals enter, it'll look like a fraction and it'll look like this. And you enter in everything in your numerator on top, everything in your denominator on bottom, and you'll get a number. And then you can go through your answer choices and do the same. And when you do that, you end up getting a huge number storing in two for M, three for P and four for V. But B is the one that will get you that same number, which would be one, let's see, what is that? 1,104,672.658. And that's the same thing that this one will give you up here if you've stored in two for M, three for P and four for V. Obviously, if you know your exponent rules, it's going to be much easier and quicker to solve the problem. 
One of the things that I like to say is, if you look at your numbers first, 45 divided by 15, what is that? It's three, which means this is an answer choice or this is an answer choice. It's not going to be C or D. So you can at least eliminate some answer choices if you just start with your numbers. Obviously, you're going to be applying your quotient rule, and you're going to have to remember what you do with negative exponents as well. Moving on to number 16, which expression is equivalent to, all right, let's store in 2 for the value of x, and then we can just replace each r with x. So I'm going to replace that with x, that with x, that with x, and that with x. If you want to use r, you can. It's just it's just really easy to store in values for x because of where you can find x. And when you go through your answer choices, if I store in 2 for x and then I plug this entire expression in, I get negative 12. And then the answer choice that gives me negative 12 is h. You could obviously just combine like terms, okay, if you would like to do this without a calculator. So you could combine 10, since I'm adding, I don't need to distribute any kind of negative or anything. I can really just drop my parentheses. Negative r squared can be combined with negative 6r squared. You can combine 7r with 5r, and you can combine 10 with negative 18, and you'll get h. Number 24, which expression is equivalent to, looky there, there's another store in 2 for the value of x. If you don't want to do that, you can put a 1 right here and use your power rule where you multiply your exponents. Um, but if you're using the strategy, obviously, um, and you go through your answer choices, so if you plug in 2 for the value of x, oh, actually, you know what? We've got two variables here. We've got an x and a y, so let's store in 3 for the value of y. Plug that in, and you'll get... 7.5267 dot dot dot. So which one of these also gives you 7.5267? H5267 Obviously, if you're using your exponent rules, you would get x squared times y to the negative 12th power, which if you see a negative exponent, move it, make it positive. Y to the, oh, you don't even have to do that here. It's already got y to the negative 12th power. There you go. Okay, number 29, which expression is equivalent to, this might just save some of you on your EOC. 2 for the value of x, let's store it in. I'm going to enter this in on my home screen exactly as I see it. When I do that, I get 57, which answer choice also gives me 57, answer choice C. But if you feel like solving this algebraically, this is a slip and slide trinomial. So you can refer to a video that I have um, over a slip and slide trinomial or a trinomial when A is not 1. Looking at number 34. Here we go. The expression x to the power of 22 times x to the power of 7 all raised to the power of 3 is equivalent to x to the power of p. What's the value of p? There's no trick here. You have to know your exponent rules. So what do we do? The first thing we're going to do is apply our power rule. x to the power of 22 times, and I'm just going to put a little dot there, x to the power of 7 times 3 is 21. Now we're going to apply our product rule. What do we do with our exponents when we're multiplying? We add them. 22 plus 21 is 43. What's the value of p? Well, p is the exponent. So my answer is 43. So in my grid, I'm going to do a positive and a negative, and my answer is 43. And if I want, I can put a positive, but I don't have to. I absolutely have to if it's negative. Number 36, which expression is equivalent to, oh my gosh, I can't believe how many there are here. Let's store in 2 for the value of x. Plug this in our home screen. If you want to go ahead and pause this, you can absolutely do that. Now, I'm storing in 2 for the value of x. Notice my variable is d. So I'm going to actually rewrite this. 
There we go. Now I'm going to store in that into my calculator, plug in that into my calculator. And what do I get? I get 714. So when I go through my answer choices and I do the same, F is the same one that gives me 714. Again, I've plugged in X for D. You can also just factor out a GCF and your GCF happens to be 21 between these two numbers. And then the greatest amount of x's I can factor out is 1x. And what am I left with when I divide 21x out? I'm left with 10x minus 3. Again, I have a video on my channel that it, that describe, or it teaches how to factor out a GCF. You can always go back and look at that video. These are just test-taking strategies. Number 44, which table shows y as a function of x which one's a function? In a function, x values can't repeat. Okay, so which one is a function? Pay attention, is it asking you which one is a function or which one is not a function? It's asking for which one is a function. H is the only one that does not show any repeating x values. Obviously, they all repeat in F got these negative ones that repeat in G and I've got some zeros that repeat in J. Moving along, number 48, which X function is equivalent to? Wow, let's store in two for the value of X. Then I can plug this in on my calculator and then go through all of my answer choices. And this one right here is what will give me the same value. That's j. Now remember, 3x minus 4 squared means 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4. So be careful with that. You can also, anytime you see q of x equals or it's fancy schmancy for y, you can plug it into y equals. And when you go through your answer choices, which one of these graphs the same graph? j will be your answer. Number 53, which expression is equivalent to? Well, you can always just plug in 4 times the square root of 147, and you get about 48.497. Which one of these gives you the same thing? Well, answer choice A gives you 339.48, so that's absolutely not it. B gives you 31.749, absolutely not it. C gives you 7.937, absolutely not it, because it's not even the same. 28.3 gives you 48.497, therefore that's my answer. Now, you want to be careful because what if you got the same thing? Let's say there was another answer choice that gave you the same decimal. Well, then you got to make sure that it's all the way simplified. So let's say I had an answer choice that was two square roots of eight. And the question asked me to simplify it, just completely simplify it. Well, this might be the same amount, but it's not completely simplified because there's another perfect square that goes into the square root, that goes into eight, and that's four. I can break that out into four times two. The square root of four is two. So this actually, two square roots of two, and then I take this and I multiply it by that, and I get four square roots of two. This is the most simplified. You just have to be careful and be aware that that could be a possibility um, on your test. So that concludes the 2019 version of the Algebra 1 EOC reporting category number one. I hope it was helpful.